Thank you for coming. Thank you for Hey, uh, we are the Hot Club de Rue Bleu, which means Blue Street in English, in case you don't speak French. And we were asked to do a little uh, semi-lecture concert about the music of Django Reinhardt. And uh, it, we are not necessarily experts in the style of Django Reinhardt. If you've seen Blue Street, we're really the Blue Street jazz band. But um, let me tell you a little about, bit about Django Reinhardt. Django was born in 1910. His name was Jean-Baptiste Reinhardt. He was born in Belgium, but lived most of his life in France. He was a real-life gypsy. Um, they have different names for different gypsies around Europe, and he was considered a Romany gypsy and also a Manouche. That would be one who speaks Italian mostly and, or one who speaks French or lives in France. Um, he, de he never lived in a house until he was about 20 years old. Um, there's an interesting story about that that if I remember, I will tell you later on tonight. Um, but he lived in a traveling band of gypsies in a caravan wagons and sleeping out by the river and, and in the, you know, he, he was a real gypsy. He never learned how to read or write. Um, he, the, the family played music. They were all cousins and uncles and all that. They played music and they also uh, did things like built baskets and furniture out of reeds and that kind of thing. Um, when he was about 10 years old, he just loved the music and he really wanted to play. And his mom didn't have the money to get him a, an instrument. She didn't think he was serious anyway. So he didn't have a guitar. And then a couple years later, a neighbor gave him a banjo guitar. It was a six string neck, like a guitar, but with a banjo body. And uh, he would just sleep with it every night and just played it constantly for hours at a time. Um, one story was that there was a, a hunchback in the neighborhood who was a guitar player and he uh, went off with the hunchback one night and hung out all night playing guitar and then realized that his mom was gonna kill him for not coming home. So he stayed a couple more days until he figured he couldn't stay out anymore and he did get a nice whooping when he got home. But uh, that's just, he was just so in love with, with playing the guitar. By the time he was 13 years old, he was playing professionally. Um, and they didn't play, he wasn't playing jazz, he was playing French musette, and he was playing with an accordion player. Um, they, uh, he, he was married at 17, and for the gypsies what would happen was he fell in love with the gypsy girl in their camp, and they disappeared for a couple days, and that was called eloping and being married for those guys. So he came back and, uh, and was married at 17. And by then, he was, uh, he was making his living playing in duos and, and different things. Um, the biggest story, I don't know how many people here are really familiar with Django Reinhardt, but um, if you are, you know that he had a, a terribly disfigured left hand from a terrible fire that happened. And uh, actually, let's play, let's play another song about gypsies, and then we'll, I'll tell you about the story of his tragic fire. Um, there's a song that Django recorded, it's called Dark Eyes, and it's considered the gypsy anthem. I was going to say national anthem, but they don't have a nation. So um, it's the only, it's really about the only non-jazz song that he used to play after he started playing jazz. And uh, Miss Karen Margaret is going to sing it in the traditional Russian that the lyrics were written in. And does it have, are you singing in French also? No, sir. Okay. No. Uh, sometimes people do it in French too. She actually has it here in, in Russian characters too. She's gonna Ooh. Be and I took one semester in college, so. Let's see what let's let's see, see if I, I can heard. remember how to play it. <laughs> let's see. I uh, no. I, I'm gonna play a little intro and then I'll you'll know when to come in. Okay. And she's gonna sing first time. Okay, great. Okay. Can you can you hear? I can't hardly hear myself. Go like that. Okay. <laughs> No, I, I'm better off not hearing myself. Oči čornje, oči strasnje, oči džugnje i prekrasnje. Как люблю я вас, какой уз я вас, 
znat uvitelj vas, ja v dobrje čas, ok ne davam vi, ljubi mi te mi, vižu trav vas, po duše moje, vižu plamja vas, ja po vednoj de, zoženo na njom, zet se vedno je. No, ne grusten ja, ne pečasten ja, utešitel ja, ne zub da moja, z još to luštevo, živžni bog dal nam, žrtvu otal ja, odnevim dal ja, predu otal ja, odnevim da zam, o žrtvu dvolja, odnevim dla. That was fun. Um, you know, another another typical thing about the gypsies were that you know gypsies are still to this day around in in Europe, and they're still kind of looked down upon and discriminated against. And I just heard a story literally last week about these Romani gypsies where they had a child that was blonde haired, and the authorities thought that they'd kidnapped her, and so they took her away. And eventually, there were. Um, DNA tests done and they realized that it was their kid, you know, um, but they always told stories to scare the kids off. Stay away from the gypsies. You'll get kidnapped. Um, but maybe that was true about the hunchback guy with the guitar. I don't know. Um, so Jangle was, he, he, once he got playing music, he, he would tend to not show up sometimes and just go fishing and do, you know, he, he was unconventional in that way. Right. And, and he, I was going to say, Right before the tragic fire that, that disfigured him, he was just discovered, and he was signed to a contract by a, a band leader from England named Jack Hilton, and he was going to get his first huge big break, because he was very poor up until then. Um, and he came home from the gig that night, and his wife had been, uh, she was pregnant, and they, she'd been making flowers out of celluloid to sell to make some money. And that's very flammable. And when he came home, he knocked a candle over, and the whole caravan just burst into flames. And she got out, and he covered himself with a blanket and fell down on the ground. And you know, the people thought he was burned to death. And they, he finally comes out, and he had a terribly burned. These two fingers on the the hand that is used for fingering the guitar were fused together, and burned very badly. And his right leg was burned so badly that when they took him to the hospital, they wanted to amputate it. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't allow him to do it. So 
um, he was bedridden for about a year and a half after that, uh, trying to recover from the burns. And during that time, his brother Joseph, who they called Nin Nin, who was also a guitar player, and all, who also looked very much like Matt Botel, <laughs> he was a very hairy guy, and uh, <laughs> we were going to pencil Matt's eyebrow together because he had this big eyebrow like that. Um, yeah, but anyway, he brought him a guitar to be physical therapy, and he practiced and got better, and he was able to, I think that it was one of the reasons why he was so unique as a player, because he overcame this, and he had to play everything with two fingers. There's one video clip that you can find on YouTube, and you can see him playing amazingly fast with these two fingers. His middle finger was very long. I, I could never do that. Um, and he could use the other stub of fingers to do chording and so he figured out how to use different chord shapes to do things that normally a guitarist would do totally differently and it it added to his his totally different and unique sound okay so after he gets out of the after he recovers from the fire he uh, pretty much never went back home to his wife who had been pregnant and i forget the name of that son but he later became a guitar player but pretty much never became famous. He was a, just played for the gypsies. Um, but he did have this cousin that he was very fond of, and, and her name was Naguin, and they got together, and they were married for the, you know, the remainder of his life. That was his, his real life partner. Um, so let's play a couple of typical songs that are sort of Django, known for Django. This one is called I'm Confessing. It was one of the first ones that he recorded with the band they call the Hot Club of France, the quintet of the hot club of France. Okay. A one, two, a three, four.
Yes. Oh, gosh. Oh, uh, that was not a Django Reinhardt composition. I'm not sure, but I know that he recorded it in 1934 with the first quintet of the Hot Club of France. So it was older than that. And it, it is true that some of his compositions seem, sound very modern compared to the music of that time. And one of them, his most uh, famous recording was called Nuage, which means clouds. And we're going to play that next. And uh, it's just a beautiful song. He was influenced a lot by um, uh, French Impressionist music, too. And he actually wrote a classical piece of music. And remembering that he's a gypsy and didn't know how to read or write, he wrote by playing it and having somebody else write it down for him. But that piece, I don't know, did you know he did that? It was, it was on a concert with uh, Ravel's Bolero, uh, WC piece, and, and Django Reinhardt's piece played by the French Symphony Orchestra. So. And, and you, later in his life, when the Bop era came in, he went right along with it and wrote really sophisticated music he had, it was, had a very advanced ear. So he was incredible in terms of musically and his harmonic palette and all that stuff. All right. And by the way, let me, before we go on, he did record an album with a harmonica player, but uh, <laughs> the, the reason why Dave Alvin is... Alvin and his chipmunks. <laughs> no, no. It was an American, I think his name was, it was something Adler or something. Yeah, um, Larry Adler. Larry Adler. Um, but the main foil for Django Reinhardt, his musical partner was Stefan Grappelli, who was a great violinist. And they met playing in some sort of like big bands, and sometimes Stefan Grappelli played piano and sometimes he was playing violin. But they uh, got together and jammed at the gypsy camp one night and stayed all night and it was great. And, and then they, they formed this uh, group called the Quintet of the Hot Club of...